For a challenge, I created the weakest man in Project Zomboid and survived for 200 days. Weak man made it through the brutal cryogenic winter but now has a much bigger task ahead to survive in the most dangerous city in Project Zomboid, Louisville. Can he make it through another 100 days on his journey to becoming the strongest man alive? And can he brave zombie infested corridors of the Grand Ohio Mall and emerge victorious? Relax, crack open a cold one and let's find out. Day 201 was still deep in the winter, but at least the cryogenic part was now over. And while Weak Man had a lot more to learn before he could become a strong independent woman, I wanted to start with first aid, the crafting skill I've been ignoring so far. And all I had to do was touch a corpse inappropriately every hour. Alright, that gave me like 6 points of first aid XP, which is not the best, but it's a start. So that's what I did for the rest of the day, while also gathering cum rags from Zeds and learning tailoring. The next morning I woke up to a helicopter, which was instantly followed. Is that an airplane just after the helicopter? What the fuck is going on? My touching corpses paid off next as weak men reached level 1 in first aid, but then the hordes following the airborne society arrived. I spent most of the day dispatching them with a pistol and a machete, like a Latin American drug lord, but it was worth it as I reached level 3 in nimble. I started day 203 with exercise because I wanted to reach level 7 strength as soon as possible. I then spent some time tending to my garden and practicing first aid. Don't worry my friend, I'll be gentle and it will all be over soon. In the evening I finally remembered I can now reinstall the washer and the dryer, so I brought them upstairs and then plugged them properly before ending the day with some more exercise and tailoring training. Next couple of days I was focused on more of the same, leveling strength and first aid skills. I also wanted to sort the guns and ammo that still remained in the back of my box truck more than 100 days after I brought it back. Afternoon of day 204 brought some greenery for the first time in a long while and also a helicopter who attracted zombies I had to deal with in the evening. Christmas came early for you motherfuckers. Next morning I harvested a new batch of winter cabbages which probably tastes something like if a barefoot animal girl stepped into your salad. After an exercise I cleared my garage, grabbed more weapons from the truck, then this happened. Okay this guy is saying something, I don't trust him. Clearly, the Airborne Society was evolving, but so was Weak Man, who reached level 2 in first aid and started reading the next skillbook, dressed in a new outfit, which was clearly clogged with dirt, as I noticed a dirty Moodle for the first time, which was part of a new mod I added. That allowed me to test my new washer and dryer, and for the first time in forever, Weak Man had crispy clean clothes. Alas, his joy didn't last long, because his friends were back in force. Oh, this one is shooting! Holy shit, this one is shooting at zombies. I spent the evening clearing them out from the safety of my rooftop, even switching to a rifle for a bit. Then, I improved my new cloak with leather patches, which really improved my body protection. On the morning of day 207, I finished the first aid book, while push-ups brought me very close to the next level of strength. Then I decided to check outside and I found this. Holy fucking shit, there's so many in here. Indeed, there were too many, especially because weak man was incapable of running due to the exercise fatigue. I ended up kiting them around before escaping back upstairs while almost getting my leg eaten by Zeds. As I woke up on day 208, another heli flew by just to say hello and after my morning exercise, I went to say hello to the hordes that followed it. For once I wish this place would be full of furries, not zombies. You know, the thick, heavy kind. I was again tired, of course, so there was no running away from them. But I trusted in weak men just like I would trust the great Cornholio. And slowly, I managed to clear the Zeds around my home. Then, after a short nap, I finally reached level 7 in strength, taking another step towards turning weak men into a strong man. In the evening, I snuck outside in the dark and took care of a couple more groups infesting the area. The next morning, I decided to go on an adventure. I drove to the bookstore in town, dispatched the group groups outside, then I snuck into the shop to see if I could find any advanced medical books and I got lucky with two. First aid is something I have never ever leveled up in Project Zomboid but with the first aid overhaul mod 
it actually is a fun skill, so I'm excited to actually do it. Back at home, more zombies awaited me, and I dealt with them like I deal with beautiful women when they try talking to me, by hiding on the roof and running in circles. Coincidentally, that also increased my light-footed skill, which didn't really help me when I almost got jumped by a sneaky zombie while I was harvesting threat from corpses. On day 210, I started with squats to improve my fitness levels, and then I spent the morning reading and practicing first aid. But of course, there was no way it could remain a peaceful day. Oh come on, you gotta be kidding me! There's like two helicopters per day now, this is getting ridiculous. And just like hiding from women, I decided to stay upstairs and hide from whatever was outside. And I got rewarded by finally reaching level 3 first aid in the evening. But hiding like a fat little rat would get me no closer to my main goal. Surviving in Louisville, the most dangerous city in Project Zomboid. And as you know, my next check on the preparation list was getting metalworking to level 6. Even though I started the day to 11 by harvesting some tomatoes and potatoes, I then drove to the gas station to refill my big propane tank. I also did the math, which by itself was a terrible idea, and realized I don't have enough screws to upgrade my car. So I then drove to the nearby storehouse, took care of the guardians there, and got lucky with two boxes of screws, which rounded up a successful day. Is this gonna be like a first day without a helicopter? That would be insane. I was then ready to go on an adventure, and my goal was West Point Bridge. Alas, I knew it would be a long trip. I'm so slow, I feel like a fat dog on a mobility scooter. Like, Sunday Driver is the absolute worst. It took me four long foggy hours to make it there, and luckily there was only one big group of Zeds around, which I managed to sneakily avoid in the thick fog. I spent the rest of the day dismantling ranks, which very slowly increased my metalworking skill. Alas, unfortunately, it went slower than the trains here in Balkan lands, when those trains go anywhere at all. When the fog dissipated, I found my balls and destroyed the zombies who were closing in on the bridge. I then continued to weld long into the night until not a single wreck remained. Alas, my skill was nowhere near level 6, so I decided to spend the night sleeping in the car. There was a zombie waiting for me when I woke up, but I escaped, not back home, but towards Louisville, because I knew there should be a big amount of burned car husks just outside the city itself. Ah. Ah, Louisville, it might have taken me seven months, but finally, weak man is on its border. I had to fight off around a hundred zombies who were weirdly attached to those ranks, just like my subscribers are weirdly attached to their fursuits. I then tiptoed my way from one vehicle to another, dismantling them until my propane ran out in the evening. I wish I could say I also reached level 6 metalworking, but I didn't, and had to turn back home. They say don't drink and drive, but well... This is zombie apocalypse, who's gonna stop me? I should have known saying something like that would go down as famous last words, because soon after, this happened. Oh shit. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that, <laughs> that is very bad. With a pop tire, my car slowed down to a crawl. My gas was in the red, and Weakman was ridiculously tired. I was in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by zombies and trees, and there was only one way this could go down. But Weakman popped them pills like a true American man, and dispatched every single zombie on that road, while my heartbeat was going crazy. I then checked my vehicle, noticing both of the front tires were gone, and since it was 3am, I could do nothing but sleep in the car, and only hope I survived the night. And sur Survived the night, I did, but then it was time to escape back home. Well, this is a whole different bag of dicks, but I believe weak men's got this. I turned toward McCoy's in hopes of finding a working vehicle and water, which I had none left. I got lucky with an absolute wreck of a car, which got me to the logging grounds. I snuck past the hordes, broke into one of the buildings to get water, then began searching the parked vehicles. Oh, it works! Let's fucking go! It works! We got a decent working car. We got gas, it's time to go home. Weak man was absolutely tired and caked with filth, but I rejoiced when I finally returned to the safety of my fire station. I awoke to a snowstorm the next day, so I decided to spend the morning indoors. I exercised, practiced first aid, and when the weather calmed down a bit, I decided to check out the car tires. Needless to say, they all needed to be inflated, like that sex doll you're hiding under your bed thinking your mom has no idea it exists. Trust me, she knows. In the afternoon, another heli flew by and then I heard this on the radio. Loot runner heading out. Oh, what does that mean? Naturally, it meant another morning visitor who brought with some very sneaky zombies. He's waiting for me. 
He's just waiting to pounce, what a dildo. But sneaky or not, I dispatched the group once again, then worked my way towards the gas station. I refueled the blue truck and all my empty gas cans, because I knew I'll need plenty of gas when I go to reclaim my police car. In the evening, my first aid practice finally paid off as I reached level 4, and if you're wondering why I've been trying to increase the otherwise useless skill, well, with first aid overhaul mod, I had access to things like crafted advanced bandages and adrenaline syringes. Day 217 was the saving private police officer car day. I jumped into the blue truck and headed to the highway. There we go, there's my beauty. It would be a true crime to leave you behind. A crime like putting pineapple on pizza, which to be honest is a crime people should go to prison for. I killed the remaining Zens, refueled the police car, then it was time to become a mechanic. This kind of minimum wage job might be beneath most of you, but weak man tore apart his truck, uninstalling every single brake, suspension and tire, and then reinstalling them all on the armored car. The result was the same as if you left your vehicle unattended on a side road in the Balkan countryside, and as I drove away, only a blue husk remained behind. I started the next day with fitness training and a heli flyby, mixed with some target practice from the rooftop. I then harvested fresh broccoli, finished reading the third first aid book and exercised some more. Another heli showed up the next morning as I was practicing first aid, so I decided to celebrate and I baked a tray of delicious biscuits. You see, it's the small things in life that keep you going. Why don't you just move over here, huh? Why don't you just live in my base, you fucking helicopters? Oh, is He's making noises again. And if you thought that was the last one of the day, you'd be wrong because a third one showed up in the evening as I was running in circles on the roof to get weak man's sprinting skill to level 3. After all those helicopters, I expected there's gonna be plenty of Zeds waiting for me the next day and I was not disappointed. Oh my god, are you shitting me? Look at this! That's insane! I fought them with bullets and blades, but they flocked to me like sims to a male VTuber posing as an anime girl with tickle bitties. The battle lasted most of the day, and in the end, weak man crossed 9000 kills, which put him in the range of being able to become desensitized at last. I spent most of the day 221 doing chores around the base, then I drove to the gas station to refill the big propane tank. I wanted to reach level 6 in metalworking at last, without driving half across the world to dismantle car wrecks. So I started destroying everything I could around the gas station. This is like the least safest thing you could do in the middle of the night where you can't see shit. While it wasn't exactly safe, it was still worth the XP. And I wanted more XP the next day, but... Oh Jesus, you guys surprised me there! With my pants now stained brown, I then drove into town and dismantled the whole storehouse worth of big metal shelves. Of course, that wasn't enough, so I moved to the house next door and then this happened. Woo, that was close! Oh my god. I had to get up from my PC to change my pants after all this, but I was now barely 100 XP away from level 6, and I was determined to finally reach it. A couple of Zeds tried to stop me, but they failed. I dismantled a couple more shelves, and at long last, I made it. I was now able to install better protection on my car, so I did the math and realized I'll need 28 metal pipes, metal sheets, and 20 metal bars. That was a lot, and I was about to go find it when this happened. What the fuck was that? What what the hell is going on? I think they're bombing something. No idea what that was, but it didn't stop me from driving to the old intersection where I spent the evening gathering materials. The next morning, I removed one door protection from the car and rejoiced when I saw I got some materials back. That meant that in total, I needed to gather much less than I thought at first, and I got what I needed at the storehouse. I knew armoring the car would be a lengthy process, so I parked it in the garage for safety. Alas, with all the broken walls, it wasn't safe at all. So. I spent the rest of the day rebuilding them and patching any hole I could find, but like destructive little Karens, zombies instantly took offense to that. The fucking instant I built something you're already here smashing crap? Day 225 was finally the armoring day, or I guess this armoring, because it took me half of the day to dismantle all of the old armor, and by that point, weak man was queasy from all the corpses he was locked in with in the garage. Just imagine the smell in there, it must have smelled like a Twitch streamer apartment. I was back into the garage of death the next morning, and it was time to armor it up. Oh man, how am I gonna even see through this tiny hole? 
This, this can't be safe, right? This can't be legal. Not that there was anyone left who could tell me what's legal anymore and the Zeds didn't seem likely to evolve in that direction. So I worked on the car until Weakman was queasy again. A heli surprised me in the evening just as I was feeling lucky for not seeing it for a couple of days. Which meant the back wall was destroyed the next morning and Zeds were waiting for me in the garage. You know what? Zombies breaking down my back door is the ultimate truth of Project Zomboid. In fact, if you Google Rule 34 for zombies right now, well, you can learn all about that. I then had to dispatch all the walking corpses around the base, which proved to be a useless endeavor, because in the afternoon, another heli showed up. Seriously, just eat me instead of breaking my shit constantly. So I had to repeat the whole process before I was able to plug the holes once again. Only a few Zeds remained the next day, which meant I could finally go back to armoring. I installed the two missing doors and then it was done. Two more skills remained on my checklist, getting fitness to level 7, which was already very close, and then mechanics to level 5, so I could repair the engine on my truck if needed. I focused on doing squats the next morning, then I practiced first aid and read a book. When I exercised in the afternoon, it finally happened. Ladies and gentlemen, there it is finally at long last level 7 fitness and strength you'll love to see it only mechanics remain now before i was ready for louisville but i noticed i was running very low on 45 acp ammo so i spent the evening preparing a new gun i pimped out the desert eagle i had lying around and while i didn't have too much ammo for it i wanted to make every bullet count so naturally i had to test it the next morning damn that sounds cool while it sounded really cool, it also sounded really loud, even with a suppressor. I then drove to the bookstore because I wanted to check if there was a sneaking level 4 book there, but the illiterate masses tried to stop me, so I had to educate them and we all know there's no better education technique than a bullet to the cranium. Naturally, the book I was looking for wasn't there, so I went back home. Just as I reached level 6 in first aid, a heli showed up again and I had to deal with a fallout. The last 8 bullets of this pistol that has served me for for a long ass time. I switched to Desert Eagle next and kept on blasting well into the night, but it was so loud, zombies kept on showing up. So I finished the last few with a machete and then I prepared a new sidearm, a 9mm pistol which could hold a 50 ammo drum. And I needed that bad boy as I drove to the Courtman Medical the next day after another morning heli. Everything is so empty around here because all of the population of the city just keeps on coming to my base due to the constant helicopters. Well, it was not empty at all. In fact, I had to use more than 100 bullets to dispose of the corpses waiting for a checkup at the doctor, which basically sums up everything wrong with American public healthcare system. But after I turned them all to mince meat, I was able to sneak inside to get what I was looking for, a scalpel. I knew I'd need one to continue leveling first aid, and with that mission accomplished, I returned back home, where I was greeted by a big group of Zeds. The next morning, morning finally broke me. I am fucking disabling this shit. But first, I spent the day leveling my mechanic skill until Weakman got queasy once again. So I decided to do what needed to be done and I carried every single corpse onto a pile outside until the garage was clean. No helicopters, it's so peaceful out here. And so I was able to work in safety at long last. I spent the day grinding away at mechanics until weak men got very tired. Then I read a book and practiced first aid. I hid from the heavy snowstorm the next day and my work in the garage finally paid off with level 5 mechanics. Then I spent the evening towing the old training racks out of the garage so I could move the box truck inside which caused a lot of noise. Like how dude? You could just bite me or something, why do you have to destroy my shit? And then it was down to the last step, loading up my truck with everything I could possibly carry. But weak men had all thumbs straight, which meant I spent the whole day loading up with guns, ammo, tools and weapons and at the end of the day I wasn't even halfway done. So I continued on day 236, transferring food, books, medicine and even more guns. Which I continued doing the next day until I realized I can armor up the trailer as well, as I didn't have the necessary resources I drove to the warehouse where a couple of groups of Zeds made me work for the materials. When I had enough, I installed the fresh armor and then continued loading the truck. And now we should have enough ammo in here to basically liberate half of Bosnia. Worried I'll forget something, I went through my things multiple times. I also refueled the car and filled up every gas can I had. I also washed my clothing and loaded up the last few things into the trailer. You know what? Tonight, we get drunk. Tonight, we celebrate with bourbon because... 
You never know what tomorrow brings. And then on day 239, I said my goodbyes. Goodbye, my sweet prince. It was nice knowing you. I promise to return one day if I survive. I then spent most of the day weaving past zombie hordes on the way to Louis, but I didn't want to go knocking on the front door. So I took the side roads and 10 hours later, the extremely exhausted weak men finally made it to the border. Oh, we finally made it, almost 10 hours later. I took out the zeds around the fence, then wanted to rest in the car. Alas, weak men was terrified of the unknown and refused to sleep. So I drove further into the wilderness to a safe spot where I spent the night. I broke the fence in the morning and then crossed the border into Louisville. I first stopped at military checkpoint. Welcome to Louisville, motherfucker. I searched it for loot and grabbed the generator and then I continued to another checkpoint where I repeated the whole process. At this point, my gas levels were getting pretty low, so I stopped at the burned out town, made a hole in the fence, then connected the generator at the one remaining gas pump. Zombies tried to stop me, but I successfully refueled my truck and then drove deeper towards the Louis and stopped at the farmhouse to spend the night. Weak man woke up early the next morning, excited to go deep deeper into the city. I have to admit, I was pretty nervous how this was going to go, especially because my goal was to get as close as possible to the Grand Ohio Mall. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now in Louisville proper, so it's time for a party. I started the party a few blocks away from the mall, and lucky for the tired weak men, it was a short party, or should we say shardy. As a fellow sharding enjoyer, I disposed of the zombies around the Knox radio station, and then decided to claim it as my new base. I parked my truck into the garage, attached a bunch of emergency escape ropes, then I brought a generator to the roof. I cleared the fresh invaders in the morning, then I brought upstairs a fridge and filled it with my perishables. I also destroyed the access to the stairs, so it was now safe upstairs. I then planted some potatoes on the roof, destroyed furniture for planks, and used those to build a water collector barrel next to my farm. Of course, this was Louis, so zombies broke inside in the evening, probably trying to grab the couch I had my eye on. Please do not break. Fuck! So I had to continue to sleep on a shitty office chair, but that didn't stop me from improving my new home. I installed new counters and a sink, which I connected to the rooftop barrel. I also removed all the terminals in the room and replaced them with storage containers. Since it started to rain, I decided to grab more soil and planted even more potatoes. Then I cleaned the whole room to make space for a comfy bed, which I went to search for the next morning in a full-out thunderstorm. Stealthing up to Zeds got me to sneaking level 6, and many of them met their demise at the end of my 9 mill barrel. I then found what I was looking for in the nearby apartments and brought it back home so weak man could finally get some good quality sleep. In the evening, I then broke a hole in the floor so I could have an easy access directly into the garage. I woke up to uninvited visitors on day 245 and then decided to take care of the reinforcements as well, showcasing just how far weak man has made it. Weakman was incapable of speaking to women before the zombie apocalypse, but look at him now! Look at him go! Indeed, most of my subscribers were like Weakman once, but if you want to defeat your demons, then subscribe now and join my Discord community. From my daily trip, I also brought back an oven, and I cooked a stew so Weakman could celebrate in style. I also brought more storage containers upstairs and began filling them up. The next day, I went on an adventure and drove to the nearby gas station, where I set up my second generator after dispatching the locals. I also found a lot of trash food inside, then I went to scout the mall. Good shit. The Grand Ohio Mall and all the lag spikes that go with it. Now I knew what I'll have to deal with, but first I wanted to turn Knox Radio into a proper home, where Weakman could have space for his personal time. Spotting zombies from the roof the next day gave me an idea. I grabbed my 308 sniper rifle and noticed I can indeed snipe Zeds a whole screen away. I can shoot them over that roof. Oh my god, that's amazing. I had fun with my new rifle, then I finally reached first aid level 7 in the afternoon, which meant I now had a use for that scalpel. I then snuck across the street and almost got got. Jesus, how did I not see you? Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer indeed, but I survived without a scratch this time and then broke into the nearby gun store. I was hoping for some shotgun or 9mm ammo, but all I found was pretty useless to me. But at least I now had a locker to store the sniper rifle on the roof. After some midnight rooftop sniping, I exercised for the first time in a while, and weak men felt it the next morning, as I snuck back to the apartment complex to grab even more things. I am a thief that comes in the night. Actually, not even the night. I come in the middle of the day, then I steal your furniture. 
I placed the cupboards and then decided to cover the nasty stain on the ground. And slowly but surely, the Knox radio was turning into a cozy home. In the evening, I then went to grab some cum rags from the corpses outside, so I could train my tailoring skill once again. I spent half of day 250 working on that, but it wasn't quite enough to get me to the next level. I then exercised, checked up on my taters, practiced first aid and did some more midnight sniping. I went on an adventure the next day and I grabbed a new rifle to test it out. This gun is very rapid fire, but but it really does not do as much damage as you would hope. Unfortunately, it didn't last long because the suppressor broke pretty fast, so I had to switch to my trusty 9mm sidearm. Like a true Slav, I robbed a liquor store along the way, then I continued to the fire station where my targets awaited. Yes, I wanted to grab one of those big boys, and I got lucky that they were all in perfect condition. I broke in, hotwired the engine, and brought it back home. The next day, I had to go on a perimeter check because a lot of single Zs wanted to mingle with weak men. In the afternoon, I broke down more furniture inside the radio station to get planks, which I used to build a second ring collector barrel on the roof. On day 253, I returned to the apartments behind the station, and I stole a washer and a dryer. The strength of weak men to climb up this rope with a washing and clothing dryer in his inventory is crazy. I then installed the two machines underneath the new barrel, which allowed me to wash my clothing, and while I waited for them to dry, I gave weak men a new trim. The next morning, I grabbed my sledge and drove to the nearby storage lots. I fought the locals inside and one of them was nice enough to provide me with a key for the whole facility. I grabbed a sweet new sofa then hit the jackpot with a locker full of ammo and guns. I looted the whole place and stored the useful things in my car. Then I went back upstairs for the big fancy couch. Please don't break this beautiful couch. No, come on. He was really tired at this point, so I had to return home, where Weakman enjoyed some bourbon on his new sofa. On day 255, I destroyed the big dishes on the roof to make space for a new farm plot where I planted tomato seeds, which I found the previous day. I then practiced first aid and ripped apart all the useful clothing I could find on corpses, so I could spend the rest of the day training tailoring, which I got to level seven in the evening. Day 256 was the first day of spring, like a bear awoken from his slumber, I returned to the storage lots where I instantly got lucky with a shotgun and 9mm ammo. Then a couple of Zeds broke out of one of the storage lockers and I put my master baiting skills to good use once again. I need your key, boys. Give me your fucking keys. It took me multiple more kills before I finally got it, which allowed me to loot the rest of that row before I went home for the day. But I craved action, so I drove to a mini mall next to the gas station. The population in there wasn't so mini though, and an epic battle followed. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Weakman's 10,000th kill. He was now entering the meta. The gun was his muse and he ascended past all the normies on the leaderboard. My real goal in that slaughterhouse was a small bookstore in the back and I snuck in in hopes of finding the next reloading or sneaking book. Alas, no luck, so I had to return back home, but I did not return empty-handed. The next morning, you guessed it, I was back to the storage lots. Follow me, follow me, follow me. That was horrible. My horrible singing worked and I got a key for the next row. Unfortunately, the loot wasn't any good and zombies were trying to break out of three separate lockers, so I left them to it and promised to return. Back home, I inappropriately fondled a corpse, which brought my first aid skill to level 8, allowing me to begin working on the next book. On day 259, I drove to the storage lots for the one last time. Zeds who were trapped inside failed to break out, so I tried some more key baiting, which brought my long blade skill to level 4. If you want something done, you gotta do it yourself, can't rely on zombies. So I broke into every locker, finding a little but a few Zeds. I stopped to clear the road on the way back, but unfortunately my suppressor broke, so a very tired weak man had to use his katana, which he almost completely destroyed. He was covered in so much blood, he woke up as a complete nervous wreck the next morning, so I threw all of his clothing into the washer and then exercised naked while waiting for it to dry. Then in the evening, I repeated the exercise and read a book, which I continued doing the next day until I finished the first aid book and while preparing dinner, Weakman also hit level 6 in cooking. I had an adventure planned on day 262 and I grabbed an extra suppressor to keep on me as an emergency at all times. Then I drove past the big mall towards the video store and started blasting. One at a fucking time. 
Like a true American hero on 4th of July, Wickman stood his ground, taking down anyone who dared to question his cholesterol levels, and in the end, he was of course victorious. And I rejoiced when I saw I had five new tapes to watch. I returned to the scene of the crime the next day, and then drove a bit further up the road to a nearby bookstore. Sorry Zeds, I'm just passing through, I know if you wanna come and bite me, I'll have a gun ready for you. Lucky for me, the crowd was smaller around there, and I disposed of them quickly. Then I snuck into the bookstore and grabbed a bunch of books I needed. I also checked the groceries next door and came out loaded up like a fat kid in a candy shop. I was back to burpees the next morning, coupled with a cooking book. Then I continued turning weak men into strong men in the afternoon. I continued with rigorous exercise on day 265, combined with book reading and first aid practice. Then I switched it up a bit in the evening. My dude is finally catching all those shows he has missed in the first week of the zombie apocalypse. Weak man has been chugging painkillers like candy to be able to sleep with all that muscle pain and I was running dangerously low on them. So I decided to break into the local dentistry next, where I found heaps of prescription medication and an empty syringe. Happy with my haul, I then exercised some more and finished reading the next reloading book. I decided to visit the fire station again the next day, where I played tennis with the local population, but my Djokovic-like skills were for some reason not appreciated, so I decided to break inside. Excuse me lady, I'm just trying to eat here, could you give me some space please? But of course, she didn't give me space, and in fact brought a group of rude friends along. After I've dealt with them, I stole a pool table and a comfy couch from the station and returned back home. You see, I had an idea for a rec room and the foggy day 268 seemed like a perfect time to make it happen. I cleaned up the trash from the room below my main home, dismantled the old electronics and got rid of the office chairs. Then I brought the pool table and a couch upstairs. I'm not quite happy with how this looks, but I think it's a decent start. I then dismantled some more furniture to build a composter on the roof. I wanted to grab some additional no goodies for the rec room, so I drove to the storage lot and spent half of the day searching for it. There we go. That's the bad boy I was looking for. When I returned back home, a fully kitted out nomad survivor was waiting for me and I stole his fresh bread. Then I fixed the rec room. Now that is starting to look like a proper rec room now, a place where weak men could just chill. And indeed, he spent the rest of the evening chilling with a good book. Alas, he didn't chill for long because it was about time I'd do something about that big bad mall. And you see, I had a plan. First I chopped down some trees, then I broke a wall to get access to the roof. I then built stairs because I wanted to create a sky highway to the apartment block overlooking the mall, so I spent the rest of the day working on that. This is fucking scary. I don't like doing this. <laughs> oh my god. It might not look high, but trust me, a drop from there would mean weak man's death. I chopped down more trees the next morning and continued building the skyway, creating real things with my below minimum wage hands. I stopped just before the window so as to not give any Schrodinger zombies the chance to walk the skyway at night. And then I snuck back in the morning and broke inside. The first apartment was empty, so I quickly broke the access to the stairs and now the whole top floor was mine. I found the window I was looking for. This might be the window that's gonna give us access close to where we want to be. And then I spent most of the day exploring the apartments, making sure no Zeds remained and borrowing all the food supplies I could find. Day 273 greeted me with beautiful weather, but it didn't stop me from carrying all of my 308 ammo to my new hideout. Where the fuck are all the zombies? What? <laughs> There's, oh, there, there's some. I then returned to grab the sniper rifle as well, but I wasn't quite happy with the reach from the window. So I smashed it to pieces, then went back home to watch the last remaining VHS tape and level up my first aid all the way to 9. I gathered more wood the next morning and then began building a platform extending from the hideout, created to give me bigger reach. Let's see how far we can see now. Oh yeah, that's better. That is better. Satisfied, I went to chop down even more trees to build a fence at the end so not to accidentally turn into Icarus. Day 275 was the day. The weather might not be perfect, but weak man is ready to party with some zombies. I threw a mouth off and totally missed, so I waited for Zeds to group up and caught them with another. As I ran away, I tripped and scratched my leg, but not even that could stop me. I sniped the burning zombies from the safe perch, sending them to meet their maker, which probably was some kind of anime enthusiast doctor who accidentally created them in a lab trying to vet grow his new waifu. Alas, zombie numbers quickly dwindled and I was disappointed with how few of them turned up, so I knew I had to go back to the drawing board. I grabbed a different rifle the next day and went in for take two. I parked much closer to the mall this time around and instantly got them with a the molotov. In a matter of seconds, their numbers began skyrocketing and so was my sneaking skill. <laughs> 
<laughs> look at this sneaking level up. Oh my god, look at this. I danced in the spot until I reached sneaking level 7. Then I started blasting into the crowd. Some of them followed me, so I had to deal with them. And at this point, the mall was on fire. But then, this happened. Okay. No, 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 no. No! The crash reset the clock to morning. The fire was gone, and so were the Zeds. Oh my god, this is so anticlimactic. <laughs> is the mall just empty now? But of course, it was not empty. I blasted my way deeper into the building, tactically nuking the zombies flying from the sky until weak men reached 11,000 kills. Not to be deterred by a little bitty crash, I went straight back to the mall the next day and parked at the east entrance this time around. Alright, throw it. Run! Just run, buddy. Just run. Let's go. I snuck into the brush and noticed weak man was not panicked. And then it dawned on me. At long last, he was desensitized to the horrors of the apocalypse. And the horrors burned bright like the oh so many smelly hungry stars. This is the barbecue that I wanted to see. This is it. This is what real America feels like. I sniped the last few that remained. Then I let them all burn. And I let it burn in peace the next day as well, and focused on my base. I planted cabbages and repaired the generator. Then I exercised, read a book, and harvested a fresh batch of tomatoes in the evening. But the mall was still in the back of my mind, specifically the gun store in there. I drove out back past the fires, then I broke inside. Alas, the tight corridors were under a constant assault by Zeds, and I had to leave multiple times to fight them off in and outside. Fuck it, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, we have a couple. Going in there was a rough call, and with my pants stained brown, I had to admit defeat and drove back home to plan my next step. And the next step was pretty clear to me. Zombies, it is time to party once again. I parked at the western entrance and then had to run like the wind. After escaping to safety, I slowly fought my way back up the street, sniping the Zeds one by one until I made it to the big ball of fire. I watched them burn, reaching sneaking level 8 and light-footed level 7 before it happened again not a fucking again are you kidding me once again the clock reset the corpses in the fire was gone and my way into the gun store was clear so i grabbed a bunch of guns and ammo the next morning was extremely foggy perfect in fact to sneak back into the mall i grabbed more canisters of ammo then decide to try out a new machine gun alas the silencer broke real fast oh yeah this bad boy is very loud and then the game crashed once again even though there was no fire this time around and I decided I was done with a stupid mall for there were plenty other dangerous places I could scavenge in Louisville. But first, weak men deserved a break. So on day 282, I practiced first aid. Then I went to recover the sniper rifle and all the ammo from my hideout. What is he aiming at? What do you see? It's gotta be a crawler somewhere. I then washed my very bloody clothing and exercised. On day 283, I repaired my old, almost broken katana. Then I drove to the gas station to refuel the car and empty gas cans. I read a book, exercised and then spent the evening chilling in the rec room. On the dark, rainy day 284, I then decided to go on another adventure. I drove past the mall and through the unexplored and very zombie-infested roads deeper into Louisville. Oh my fucking god, there is many. My goal, a video store close to the riverside. I started blasting with my shoddy, turning into a proper Rambo to deal with the hordes wanting to eat my ass. Look, I got nothing against the ass eating. You do you, okay? But I personally prefer my ass teeth and tongue free. God, I miss this shotgun. This is such a good feeling. Yep, that lady went through three t-shirts to scratch my torso. Due to my high first aid skill, I could see just how severe the wound really was, and pissed at myself for my overconfidence, I dealt with the rest of the Zeds, then looted the store. I found two useful tapes, which I then watched in the evening. Fearing the shadow of that dreaded queasy moodle, I stayed inside the next day. I exercised to keep healthy, read a book, patched my torn clothing, and then repeated the whole process. Weak men seemed healthy, but I decided to take it easy for another day. I read, I exercised, I practiced first aid and I marveled at my beautiful rooftop farm. I also trained tailoring with my remaining thread and then planned for the next day. Okay, or we could go get some fishing done. Alas, I couldn't go fishing just yet because I had no tools for the job. So I drove to the hardware store deeper into Louisville. I dispatched a few remaining Zeds, then I snuck inside. I found twine and some useful tools, but no fishing rods, and then I looted the food store next doors as well. Back at home, I used the twine to then create two fishing rods. On day 288, I drove to the riverside southeast of the mall. This could be the prime fishing spot, I think. I got rid of the natives, 
chopped down some trees and then began building the platform. It took me half of the day, but in the end, I was satisfied with my little shack. All right, this this might not look the best or be the best, but over here we are under roof and zombies can't really get to us. So it's going to be perfect prime fishing spot. I went to fish the next day, using worms as bait. Unfortunately, they ran out pretty fast, but I was very happy with what I caught. With plenty of daylight remaining, I then decided to go forage for a bit. Alas, the forest was very infested and had to constantly fight for every stick and stone I could find, but in the end, I reached level 3. I cooked a delicious fish stew the next morning and then I drove to the fire station to pick up a heavy duty car battery I left back there. Sir? How fucking dare you? I then practiced first aid for one last time, reaching max level. And then I also reached level 6 in farming after I harvested a fresh batch of cabbages. My freezer was now full to the brim, so I drove to the gas station to borrow their popsicle fridge. I snuck back to the gas station on day 291 and installed that battery into a truck there. I fueled it up and then drove to the bookstore nearby, where I had my eye on another truck. I looted the store first though, finding plenty of survival books, but not the farm level 4 book I was looking for. I then switched the car batteries and drove back home. All right, look at this. We got ourselves a new truck and I like the way it moves. My plan for that truck was to armor it up eventually, but for now I just parked it in the garage. The next day I drove to the small mall to look for the farming book. Problem here is you never know what's upstairs. And indeed they started falling and crawling from upstairs. I didn't find my book, but I found a rifle suppressor and a lot more zombies. Whoa, this guy almost dropped right on top of me. Back home, I harvested a fresh batch of potatoes. Then I began redecorating the room next to my rec room because I wanted to turn it into a small library. But to make that a reality, I needed that elusive farming book first and I decided to search for it inside the Grand Ohio Mall. The thick fog hid me well as I snuck inside, but even after searching the whole huge bookstore there, I had no luck. So instead, I stole a bunch of furniture in a petty revenge and those shelves fit perfectly into my new library room. Okay. This is a start, it's not perfect. On day 294, I was still on the hunt, so I drove to a small bookstore north of the Grand Mall and started blasting. The thread though was just like the majority of Discord users prefer it, minor. I then searched the bookshop, alas I didn't find what I was looking for. But not to return empty handed, I then looted the candy store as well and grabbed some nice clothing. I also broke into a furniture store near my base to finish my library. I can't really say it all fits together nicely, but you know what? It sparks joy and I like it. The next morning, I was back on the road. There was another bookstore I wanted to check, but the hordes of angry librarians were waiting for me. Last time I said how much I enjoyed the shotgun, I got scratched, so I'm not gonna repeat that any jam. <laughs> Alas, they couldn't stop me from looting the store. Oh, let's fucking go, we found it. Oh my god, fuck yes. I searched the shops around for more useful items, finding some new clothing and a lot of zombies. Then I returned home to read in safety. And in safety, I remained the next day. I washed my clothing, I exercised, I trimmed weak men beard and learned about farming. On day 297, I then decided to go back to fishing, but I only caught one small catfish while breaking one of my fishing rods. So that wasn't very successful and I decided to make it a better day by doing some more foraging around. But even that didn't go as planned. Could you please stop interrupting my work? Like angry bees, they pursued me until I gave up for the day and decided to return in the morning. But this time, I drove further out of town to avoid zeds. That worked well and uninterrupted, I found some wild herbs and berries reaching level 4 in the process. The one grasshoppers I also found, I then used as a fishing bait to catch a small crappie and then I spent the rest of the evening studying. On day 299, I decided to go on an adventure again. One day remains, now why would I be cozy and safe when I can go do something stupid and dangerous? There was a police station I wanted to loot and as I parked behind it, I already began to regret my decision. Zed sworn weak men in huge numbers, but his trusty shotgun kept him alive and well to the point where I began and pushing back the horde. But of course, they found a way to get behind me. But like a true man with not much to gain, but everything to lose, I soldiered on. More than 200 corpses were laid to rest in that parking lot, but that allowed me to push inside. I got into armory, but then the Zeds broke down the only exit out of it. Trapped in a small room with no way out, I fought for my life. How the fuck? Do I get out now? My hands were shaking and my pants were full, but I turned the armory into a room of death until I finally got an opening. Holy... Fuck, man. Oh, that was fucking scary. Jesus. 
Before leaving, I also checked that SWAT van parked behind the station and promised to return for it another day. But then, it was here. Day 300 has arrived and Weakman not only survived for two months in Louisville, he actually made the city his bitch. Well, if we ignore the many times he was close to death. But as always, his eyes were turned to the future, where one last step remained on his path to become the strongest man alive, surviving for a whole year. 